Let's have some fun and discuss Buddhism. In the ancient doctrine of Buddhism, as found in the five Nikayas, i.e. the earliest texts which predate all sects and schools of modern-day Buddhism, is there a term for monk or nun? No. Is there even a term for Buddhism? No. Well, if there's no term in the ancient Pali, the oldest texts, the only pre-sectarian texts of Buddhism, no word for Buddhism, no word for monk or nun, then what did Gautama teach? The only time Gautama referred to his teachings with a name is Samyutta Nikaya 5.5, the Mahavaga, the fifth book of the Samyutta Nikaya. He said, mine teachings are to be deemed Brahmayana, the path to Brahman, i.e. the path to the Absolute or to the Agathon. Interesting. And Samyutta Nikaya 5.25, and what followers is Brahmanhood? It is our Aryatangikamaga, our Aryan Eightfold Path. And Gautara Nikaya 2.6, how is one a Brahman deemed crossed over and gone beyond, the highest appellation in Sutta, by the way, hearing him whose chitta, or mind, i.e. noose or spirit, is freed, devoid of defilements, is liberated by wisdom, such as one deemed a Brahman, deemed crossed over, deemed gone beyond. The Tathagata, the Buddha, is a designation for become Brahman, or Brahma Bhutto, Diganakaya 2.84. The well-centered mind, or citta, or spirit, is the path for the attainment of Brahman. Tamina Nikaya 4.118. These are the highest appellations in doctrine. These are the highest appellations for the worthies, the araha, the highest obtainers of wisdom, those who have obtained the pinnacle of both samadhi and wisdom. The highest appellation in doctrine. Not commentary, not conjecture, not anything that Theravada or Mahayana or Zen teaches, but in doctrine of earliest Buddhism, the highest appellation is the attainment of Brahmanhood. It has been asserted by modern so-called Buddhism in name only that knows only of the mere gods, i.e. Brahma, and nothing of the Godhead, the Absolute, the Agathon, i.e. Brahman. These two terms are extremely similar, both in the Pali and, of course, the English, they're designated identical. In English, it's hard for most people to differentiate the two, and much less is there a distinction made in the English between Brahma and Brahman, meaning mere gods versus the Absolute, or the Agathon, the Godhead, as it were. In actuality, there can be no doubt that in grammatically ambiguous expression, Brahma Buddha, meaning become Brahman, which is equal to the Atman in doctrine, by the way, which describes the condition for those who are wholly liberated, Suvimutta, that is Brahman, i.e. the Absolute, and not mere Brahma, or a Divi, meaning mere gods, that is in the text and must be read. For it is by Brahman that is one deemed wholly awake, or has become liberated. For one, the comparatively limited knowledge of a mere Brahma, i.e. Deva, or mere god, is repeatedly emphasized in all translations. And two, Brahmas are according to the beauty, accordingly the, the Buddha's pupils, and not he theirs. Samyutta Nikaya 1.141 through 145, Melinda 75 through 76. And third, the Buddha has already been in previous births a mere Brahma, a mere god, and a Mahabrahma, a great god. And Guttara Nikaya 4.88. Hence it is meaningless and absurd in the equation to say that Brahma Buddha equals the Buddha, or become Brahman equals the Buddha, and Guttara Nikaya 5.22, Dig Nikaya 3.84, and Ivataka 57. To assume that Brahman, i.e. the Absolute, equals Brahma, or mere gods, i.e. Divi, or Divas, as we would say in English translation. And that for the Buddha is explicitly, quote-unquote, much more than a Mahabrahma, meaning great god, or a god. Dhammapada Arakata 2.60. Dignakaya 3.84, the Tathagata, or the Tathagata, in actual, I should have it pronounced. The Tathagata means the body of Brahman, become Brahman. Diganakaya 1.249, I teach the way, this is Gautama speaking, Diganakaya 1.249, I teach the way to the union with Brahman. I know the way to the supreme union with Brahman, the Absolute, and the path and means leading to Brahman, whereby which the world, this phytos, of Brahman may be gained. This is the highest appellation said to his worthies, to his disciples. Diganakaya 1.248, all the people say that Gautama is the supreme teacher of the way leading to Brahman. Iribhutaka 57. Become Brahman is the meaning of Tathagata, or Tathagata, in actuality, should how it be pronounced. In other words, Tathagata, or Tathagata, correctly, means Brahma Bhutto. The two are interchangeable. Brahma Bhutto is Tathagata. 
i.e. the Buddha. The Buddha and Tathagata are the same metaphysical terms. Of course, we'll talk about Tathagata in another video. Majivana K1.341, the soul is having met become Brahma, Brahma Buddha Atano. In other words, self-assimilation, or epistroph in the Greek, or complete self-synthesis, i.e. the pinnacle of samadhi, the pinnacle of panavimutta, liberation via wisdom, is Brahma Bhutto, is equal to become Brahman. In other words, having become or obtained the absolute, vis-a-vis -vis wisdom and the epistrotic um, methodologies of samadhi, of sati and samadhi, the via negativa, the direct synthesis of the spirit uh, the citta upon itself, the suvi muta chitata. If you think this is Hinduism, then what does the word Hinduism mean? Hinduism comes from the word of Sindhu, the Indo-Aryan word for the sea, and came to apply to the peoples of the region east of the Indus River. The word Hinduism has no connection to any specific religion east of the Indus River. The word Hinduism has no connection at all to any people there. The point of view of religion in the Vedic literature divides itself into two parts, vis-a-vis -vis the Rig Veda on the one hand and the rest of the Vedic literature on the other. The two distinct phrases, essentially the same religion, may be called Vedic religion or Brahmanism. The division of the above names are hardly needs for any justification. It is now recognized beyond doubt that all Brahmanism is nothing but an isolated development in the religion contained in the Rig Veda the two religions are entirely different in spirit. In other words, this is from the uh, religion and Vedic literature. There is no such thing as Hinduism. Hinduism does not refer to a religion. It refers to a peoples. Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, Book 6, page 712. Hinduism has never prepared a body of canonical literatures or prayers or scriptures. It has never held a general council or convocation, never defined the relationship between laity and clergy, never regulated the canonization of saints or their worship, never established a single central religious life, never prescribed a training for its priests. There is also no word in the Pali, in the doctrine of Buddhism, earliest, in the Nikayas, for a monk or nun. The term bhikkhu comes from the word bhakti, meaning to give. The term bhikkhu or bhikkhuni uh, often translated, or almost always translated, as monk or nun, specifically means devotee. Bhakti meaning to give, devotion. The word literally means devotee. There is no such thing in the scriptures as Gautama having monks or nuns, quote-unquote. There is no such term. It is devotee, male and female only. There is no term in the Pali for monk or nun. There is no term in the Pali for Buddhism. Gautama called his teachings Brahmayana, the path to the Absolute, the path to Brahman. So where does this leave Buddhism? Well, what is Buddhism? Buddhism was nothing but a Neo-Vedantic school of thought. And metaphysics is a condensation of the complete concentration of all Vedantic metaphysics as Plotinus was to Plato and Pythagoras before him. Buddhism is not original, it is not distinct. There is absolutely nothing original in Buddhism that can't be found in the Upanishads and everything before it in the various branches of the Vedas. Buddhism is not Buddhism. How stupid does that sound? Well, it superficially sounds extremely stupid, but there is no term for Buddhism. Gautama called his teachings the path to the absolute, Brahmayana. He called his followers Brahmins. He called specifically his disciples devotees, bhikkhu and bhikkhuni, meaning to give. They were devotees. There were no monks or nuns. They were devotees. They were followers. The worthy ones who had gained the highest attainment of wisdom were called araha, or worthy ones. Hence the term araha or arahata the highest attainment, those directly underneath the Buddha, who obtained the same wisdom, the same illumination that he had, but were deemed Araha, the worthies, those who gained the highest wisdom. This is Buddhism. Gautama called his teachings the path to the Absolute. There is no such thing as Buddhism in the doctrine of quote-unquote Buddhism. <laughs> Does this make sense? Is it too complex? Well, if it's too complex, then maybe you're not smart enough to understand it. Because this is what Buddhism teaches. He taught the path to the Absolute, and he called his followers devotees. There's no Pali term for monk or nun, and no Pali term for Buddhism. And Gautama said over and over again in his highest appellations that he taught the path, quote-unquote, to Brahman, the Absolute. And this is, of course, as distinctly defined and differentiated from Brahmi, i.e. divas, or mere gods, of which no Pali translation is in disagreement about the definition of diva. 
However, they differ on what the definition of Brahman is. And how the Theravadans often translate Brahman, they translate it as the highest. The highest become. Well, it's the highest, but Brahman, of course, means the absolute. Thank you.